Hi everybody, hello, hello. I am going to wait about two minutes before I jump on and get going. I am on the road right now with the hubby and the daughter, but I'm gonna wait about two minutes before I jump, not, not even, maybe one minute. <laughs> if you're, oh, here's my hubby, say hi. <laughs> and my girl, hi, hi Chelsea. Um, we are on the road. We're headed to a softball tournament. So I'm going to wait about one minute. I didn't want to reschedule and I didn't want to stay back. So I'm like, I'm going to make this happen one way or another. So here we are in the car. So if you hear traffic, um, that's just what's going on right now. We're, we're headed to a softball tournament. Hi, Samantha. Thanks for jumping on. If you're watching live, say hello. If you're watching the replay, comment replay. Hi from Tennessee, Paula. Do you know that my dream was to retire in Tennessee until recently where I got a, a job offer that'll pretty much change my future so I couldn't take it but Tennessee I think I was supposed to be born in Tennessee and I was supposed to live in Tennessee <laughs> but you know God's plans are different they change for us right hi everybody you're on the road too Kelly yes you are hi Chrissy Jamie Jennifer Dawn Angie Michelle Thank you guys for tuning in, watching. We're gonna go ahead and jump on in. Um, we're gonna talk, let me introduce myself. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rihanna Franco, Superstar Director of Squad Goals here in Whittier, California, sunny California. It is 87 degrees right now. It is definitely not the fall season here in California. I'm about 30 minutes from Disneyland, roughly. Hi everybody, thanks for tuning, on, tuning in. Um, yeah, so if you don't know me, that's who I am. They call me Ree, so you guys feel free when we're engaging to call me Ree. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. You're amazing. <laughs> um, what I want to do, I want to set the, the, the atmosphere. I'm in the car right now. We're traveling. We're on the road. But I want you guys to feel like we're in your living room talking. We're sitting on the floor. We're having girl talk. And I want to be transparent with you. And I want you guys to open up your hearts. And I want you to open up your minds and let me in because I'm gonna touch on a few areas and it might be sensitive, it might um, it might get your wheels turning, I, but I want you to put your guards down because I'm coming to you with straight love. I'm similar to Kelly, like she mentioned earlier. Um, we're very straight to the point. I don't sugarcoat anything. I'm not mean, I promise I'm not mean. I just don't have time to sugarcoat. I don't wanna waste your time. I wanna just get straight in and I just wanna just, just go in, right? Um, it's funny how uh, Kelly was posting some of the fun facts about me. Did you guys see? Um, one of my favorite snacks <clears throat> is um, pickles, cheese, and corn nuts. And yes, I like to eat them all together. I will get a pickle and a slice of cheese and some corn nuts and I will bite that and I love it. It's a great snack. Um, I also got kicked in the face by a horse when I was seven and I blacked out on my grandma's farm and I woke up in my dad's arms carrying back to, to my grandma's house. Um, also, I got caught at 14 years old for grand theft auto. Yes, I was, <laughs> Kelly, you know what's so funny is Kelly told me she got the same thing when she was a teenager. And I was like, oh my God, we're like soul sisters. I know it doesn't, I don't look like that. Like I would have been involved in that, but yes, I was, that was so bad. Give me a screwdriver and I'll get you any car you want. <laughs> I'm not, I don't do that anymore, I promise though. Um, and I also am a hermit. I would rather be um, in my house 24 hours a day. If I could do life from my couch, I would. Um, I don't know, it's not that I don't like people. I like people, I just can't people too much because it's overwhelming for me. I'm a natural introvert. Um, it's funny because when people meet me at SFR, when they met me this come this past SFR, they're like, oh my God, you're so much more quiet in person. Um, you're not um, as like loud or whatever. I will tell you this about myself, you guys. In a large room, I retreat. I don't like to be the center of attention. I don't look for the glitz and the glam. I don't like the spotlight on me. That's not who I am. So, but on here, I'm very comfortable and I'm very, maybe it's because I'm talking about what I'm passionate about, right? So, I want you guys to get comfortable with me. That's why I spent a little bit more time um, explaining <coughs> some of my fun facts. Sorry if the camera's moving everywhere. I'm in a big truck. Um, 
I want you guys to picture, it's seven o'clock there, so it's nighttime there, right? So we're cozy, we're in your living room, we're sitting on your floor, we're having a glass of wine, coffee, water, beer, whatever you drink, okay? I want you guys to engage. I wanna hear feedback. I want you guys to comment, okay? Cause that's how we're gonna be able to um, really dig in. Let's go ahead and jump in, right? Do you remember your seven-year-old self? Seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> um, you have to get to know someone before you talk to them. See, Melissa, I, I'm that way, like, but I'm an observer. I'm a big observer. <laughs> big observer. Um, you love to do life from your couch. Yes, girlfriend. Extroverted introvert. Okay, yes. Same girl. I'm a hermit nowadays. All right. Well, let's go ahead. Remember your seven-year-old self riding on your bike, roller skating, whatever. I want you to visualize your seven, your, no, I'm not driving. He's driving. <laughs> oh, and he's just like looking at his map. I promise he wasn't on his phone. Um, <coughs> so your seven-year-old self, picture your seven-year-old self. Remember how that was? What we used to dream about? And I want to be this when I grow up and I want to go here and I'm going to go to Italy and I'm going to go to France and I'm going to do this and I'm going to have that and I'm going to go there. Remember how how wide-eyed we were remember the things we used to think about the things we would speak over ourselves we were doing it we were seven years old and we didn't know how and we didn't even think about how but we were going to Italy we were getting a horse we we had that teacher job we had whatever we wanted to be it was easy as it was it was easy as said as done right what happened to that person Jesus Jesus whoa um, what happened to that seven-year-old self? Life, right? Who told you that you could not do it anymore? Who told you that you could not achieve every single dream that you can fathom? Who told you that? Life situations, life circumstances, reality, right? We begin to, be, to, to become adults and realize that things are not as easy. Oh, you mean I can't just get on a plane and fly to Italy? I actually have to have money, and to have money, I have to have a job, and I can't find a job and that, that pays enough of my bills, And right? Is that who told us? I think so. Life told us, right? Then we began to tell ourselves that, and then we began to begin to limit ourselves. <coughs> we have to dream again, and that's how we're going to start this training. Your brother, your sister always told you that. Your mother told you that. Well, guess what? I'm here to tell you that you can have everything you dream of as long as you're willing to put the work behind it. I don't care what mom said. I don't care what, with all due respect, I don't care what your dad said, your grandma said, your sister, your uncle. I don't care who said that to you. As long as you're not telling yourself that, that's what matters. Whatever you tell self, that's what self is going to believe. And I want to I want to tell yourself that you can have whatever you dream of. Everything else we're throwing away tonight. Everything else we're not we're not taking as our own and we're not speaking as our truth. Tonight our truth is we can have whatever we want. We can dream whatever we dream, we can make happen. Right? We have to allow that childlike wonder to come back before we start out tonight. That's what we're doing. We're talking about our dreaming. <coughs> you have to be able to see it first, right? So where does it usually start? In our imagination and in our dreams, right? Let me ask you this. What would you accomplish if you knew there were no limits on you, comment below. I want to see it. What would you do if you know that nothing could stop you? What would you do? Where would you go? What would you be? What would you buy? Comment below. I'll wait. <laughs> Kelly said I could take as long as I want, so I could be here with you guys all night. <laughs> no, I have to be finished by seven at least. Um, what would you accomplish? Comment below. I know it, I know the, the time it, for it to come, like the comments to post are going to be there. 
<laughs> exactly, Kelly. Something can stop me? What? Anything and everything. What would you do? You would travel, Sam. You'd be a doctor, Christina. Your dream house, Tara. You'd be a singer, Ellis. I can't even type that all out. <laughs> a nurse, Dawn. Did you know? Tammy said, Greece place in Florida. Yes, buy an RV and travel, Joy. Go back to school, Christina. Dallas, travel the world and visit abandoned places. Andrea, finish your house. Take a vacation with the whole family. Paula would buy a house where her grandkids are. Ashley would be debt free. You guys, this can all happen. You wanna be a singer? Are you great at singing? If not, take lessons. You wanna travel the world? Put money aside. Take, take the trip. The only limit that exists is the one that is in our mind. Nobody else can put limits on you. They can have opinions, they can, they can judge, they can point fingers, they can laugh, they can mock, but nobody can limit us. Nobody can limit us. If you say you want to buy a house, you want financial freedom, you are one step away from that progress. Nobody can't tell you that. I don't care if you're $50,000 in debt. You take one day at a time and you pay 100, 200, 300. Before you know it, now you're only $45,000 in debt. Do you see what I mean? There are no limits. Whatever you could dream, whatever you could imagine can be yours. And I'm not here to fluff your feathers. I'm not here to BS you. I'm not here to tickle your ear. I'm speaking real life. I don't got time to pretend and, and, and sugarcoat things and, and make you feel good. I'm not trying to make you feel good. I'm trying to open your eyes and I'm trying to speak to your soul and I'm trying to light a fire under your ass because nobody else is going to do it if you don't do it. You have to do it yourself. Okay, next is vision. And it's not the same as dreaming. You might have thought, oh, okay, we're just gonna talk about dreaming all day. No, it, 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 vision is different. <coughs> I don't know if you guys are into Bible, but I am. I'm, 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 I'm a Christian and I'm unashamed and I'm unapologetic. The Bible says people lack and people die for, people perish for lack of vision. If you do not have a plan, you're gonna end up in the past. You're going to keep reliving the same situations if you do not have a vision for your future. If you do not have a roadmap, you're going to go in circles and you're going to keep ending up in the same spot. Anybody can say amen to that? I know I can. Without a plan, without a vision, without a clear goal roadmap, you are going to end up in the same place over and over and over because history will repeat itself unless there's a change in that plan that's going to take you a little bit different direction, right? Vision is actually seeing it. You dreamt of the house. You dreamt of being debt free. You dreamt of being that singer. You dreamt of, right? It's actually, see, okay, you dreamt it. Now do you see yourself? How about the incentive? How about this incentive? Do you guys see, can you visualize yourself on that Jamaican cruise? Can you visualize yourself boarding that plane, exiting into Canada? Can you visualize yourself laying on the beach of Los Cabos? Can you visualize yourself standing right in front of the um, Statue of Liberty? You dreamt of these places. You said it right now. You guys said it. I want to travel. Do you see yourself traveling or do you just see the location so far off that it doesn't feel like it can be obtained? I'm talking to you guys like right now, like I talk to my kids, like I talk to my group, like I'm talking to my family. Speak life over yourself because 
there's power. The power of life and death is in your tongue. If you say, I can't earn this trip, you're right, you're not going to. If you say this trip is too hard, I can't, you're not going to. If you say, I don't care how, how hard this looks, it's gonna happen. Andrea, it looks so far off right now. I want you to take those words out your mouth and throw them away. You imagined it. And I want you to keep being transparent. I'm not attacking you, just know that. I want you to, to look at yourself and say, you know what, it's kind of far off, but it's not impossible. And I'm still in this. And every day that I intentionally visualize myself, I don't remember what your goal was, Andrea, was it to be debt free? Visualize yourself a step closer to me. I'm just saying it's debt free. And put action to it. It may look so far off right now, but you use those words for power instead of letting, maybe letting them distract you or detour you from your goal. It's far off right now, but tomorrow I'm gonna be closer. I'm gonna be a day closer, a step closer. Tomorrow, the day after that, I'm gonna be a little bit closer. I'm gonna be a little bit closer. And then before you know it, that goal that you just spoke over yourself, that dream that you just spoke over yourself is right in front of your face. You're gonna turn around one day and you're gonna be like, look how far I came. Right? going if not you have to take off those blinders today you have to take off those world glasses that what whatever the the world or life has spoken into your story you have to delete it you have to take off the glasses you have to take out those ear pods air pods that you're listening to where life has told you that it's that oh that's dreaming you're an adult now you gotta stop dreaming that's oh that's silly you're never you have to take that out you have to reprogram your thinking and your what you're seeing. If you can't see, you have to you have to take off those glasses now. I know you guys are going to be working on a dream board this week, <coughs> right, Kelly? I think that's going to be one of their assignments. I po I took a picture of my dream board that I have in my office, and some people may see may think a dream board that's silly. That's for kids. No, it's for dreamers and it's for doers and it's for people that that are serious about their goals if you don't see what you want if you don't have it in front of your face out of sight out of mind I have it on my phone I have it on my wall I have it, it like everywhere during certain seasons of, of this incentive I write notes to myself and I stick them on the mirror in my bathroom in the fridge I even have my girls at the beginning of the year, I ask them, what is your word for this year? What do you want for your life? What do you want to grow in, in your life this year? My word was strength this year. My girls, um, my middle girl, her, her word was grace. She wanted to be nicer because she's a teenager and she's mean. <laughs> Juju, what was yours? Do you remember? Peace. Hers was peace. Why? Why are these things important? Because this is what they speak over their life. This is what they want to, to, to grow in intentionally. But how? If you don't intentionally choose what your goals are, slap them on a vision board, put them in front of you, put them in your phone. Jennifer's is consistency. That's a huge tool. On my vision board, you guys, I remember the first time I did a vision board for Sensi was when I did the director program. Uh, Wendy Heath Newgas is my upline superstar director, and she had us do a vision board. <coughs> I don't like doing crafts. I hate glue. I hate all that stuff. I just want to watch my Real Housewives of New York. That's what I want to do. But she had us do this. I sat down, I grabbed my magazines, I grabbed, I printed words from the computer, and I'm gonna post it if that's okay with Callie after this. I wanted to show you, but since I'm, in, I'm on the road, I can't show you while I'm driving. I was gonna bring it and pull it off my wall, but I was like, oh, that's a lot. So um, 
I'm going to post the picture, but on my dream board, I have the Porsche that I want. I just, uh, on my dream board, I had a Mercedes C-Class that I bought last year. So I pulled that off my dream board and now I slapped a new car on there because my goal is to pay off my Mercedes and give it to Juju. But now I'm just recently being told that she don't want my car. She wants a Jeep. So I'm just like, whatever. But anyways, um, I, I slapped a Porsche on there, four door black Porsche. I have a house in Arizona that I want to buy for when we travel, like a, an Airbnb it out. I want a team of a thousand. I want my family all together. I want um, director. I have everything on there and I'll show you guys the picture when I go out. My credit score, I want it as high as it can be. I posted, a, I, I printed a picture of all that stuff and I slapped it on my vision board. I put words on there like loyalty and leadership and strength, all words that define who I want to be and who I want to reflect and the culture that I want to, to create. Angie says she loves her Jeep. Well, yeah, so my kid loves a Jeep more than my car. So um, it is what it is, right? <laughs> I encourage you with this assignment that Callie's going to have you do or is having you do right now, put thought into it. Don't half ass it. Don't just slap some stuff on there so you could check it off a box. I want you guys to print that stuff, to cut out the stuff, whatever you're going to do. Make it special and put thought into it and actually think about these things that you're putting on your vision board, okay? If it's family, if you're putting a, a picture of your family, I want you to think about what your, what your goals are for your family when you're putting them on there. Have purpose behind every single thing that you put on that board and do it with integrity and do it with quality because you owe it to that seven-year-old self. Act like you're seven years old making your dream board. You, we, when we were younger, we loved to do all that stuff, right? When, when mom would pull out the crayons, the scissors, the glue, we're like, yes. Put your seven-year-old self at that table or that desk, wherever you're going to be working on, and let your seven-year-old dreaming self create that board. The no-limit seven-year-old self. So now that... Now that we have your vision board together, we have to put a plan together. We can't just dream and we can't just make a pretty board and hope it happens, right? Oh gosh, I hope my dreams come true. No, or I wish my dreams come true. We're going to talk about that in a second. That's not how it works. It's part of it. You got to dream it. You got to vision your, envision yourself. And then you got to put a plan. Make that dream a reality. A dream without a goal is just a wish, right? Now, I hear all the time, oh, I wish, I wish I could sponsor, I wish I can get better at recruiting, I wish I can uh, earn that trip, I wish I could, but you're sitting your tail on the couch all day, complaining, watching Netflix, I wish I can build a team, but I'm not, I'm not ready to put the effort into it. There's a, there's a difference between a wish and there's a difference between a dream. A dream is going to drive you. A dream is going to, to fuel you. A wish is easy. A wish is passive. Wishing is passive. I can just wish all day long and put no effort behind it. A dream is going to drive me. It's an action word. If you have a big enough dream, it's going to scare you, but it's going to drive you and you're going to have these sleepless nights. Because you know that that dream is, is so ingrained ingrained in you engraved ingrained i don't know whatever in your soul in your heart in your mind that you cannot rest until you achieve that goal i wish i can earn that trip but i'm not even working my business it's too hard only the ssds are in the trip not true only leaders earn that trip you you have a better chance when you're brand new to earn this trip than ssds do because you guys get promotion points we don't get promotion point, points anymore, so we have to work even harder. Tell me some of your goals that you have set for this fall season. Comment below. What are some of your goals for your business? Yeah, right, Kelly? <laughs> what are some of your goals? Do you guys have goals in place for this season? Have you even thought about your goals yet? 
What are your goals for this season? What are your goals for PRV this month? What are your goals for new recruits this month? What are your goals for training and coaching this month? You want to grow your team. Anybody's goal to earn the incentive? Director by the end of December. I love that, Tammy, and you hit on something I'm going to talk about right now. Add more to your team. Anybody want to earn the incentive? Do you guys want to earn the incentive? I want to earn the incentive. And some of you guys might say it, it's too big of a goal. Oh my gosh, I can't even think straight. I can't put a plan together because how am I going to get 45,000 points to, to take me and my husband on this trip? It's so, I, I've never earned a trip before. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. I always use that quote and I never understand it. Like who eats an elephant? Like who came up with that? Like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this as an analogy. But I always do. But it's weird, right? Have you broke down your goals yet? Have you made a plan? Having a goal is great. Okay, I want to hit um, annual sales by January 31st. I want to go to SFR. I want five teammates. I want to be consistent. I want, an in I want the incentive trip. I want to be active. Have you made a plan yet? Putting a goal in place is not the same as having a plan. Having a plan means you you um, break down. Sorry, my husband took the key out and now it's dinging. We're just going to roll with it. Um, having a goal is different than putting a plan in place. Your goal is great. That's the thing, right? You want to build your team and go to New York City and SFR on Sensi. I love that. What's the plan? We're going to break down some plans today. We're going to break down some plans, some goals. Let me look at what I see here. Let's pick one. Okay, let's do Chelsea's. You want to grow your team. Okay. What do you want to grow your team to, Chelsea? What do you want to grow it to? Give me a number. <coughs> I'll wait. We're good. What do you want to grow your team to, Chelsea? The tracker sheet's great, Kelly. Plans in your head, not written down, Angie. We're gonna, you're gonna write it today, and I want you to um, tag me and take a picture and tag me. Chelsea, you want, you want to grow your team to 50. This is how you break down goals. What's your goal? Okay, let's specify it a little bit more. So you, now you want to grow your team to 50, right? By when? When do you want your team to hit 50? When I set this goal for myself, comment below, Chelsea, 50. When do you want to hit 50? When I did this on my vision board, the first time I did it, I wanted my team to hit 50. Same thing. No, it was 100. I wanted my team to hit 100. So when do you want your, your team to hit 100 by? I picked December 31st of that year. And I hit it. Because I had a target. And I'm not even done yet. I'm not done yet. Comment by comment when you want to hit your 50 by. Pick a date. No pressure. <laughs> and I'm I'm seeing all of your guys' comments, and I'm gonna go back and read them once I sit. But I, I I'm I want to show you guys how to break down your goal. And I want you guys to have a real life idea of how to do that. When do you want to hit your 50 by? By next June? Dallas said next June. Next June. Chelsea, when do you want to hit your 50 by? And that's a great goal, Dallas. That's almost a year. By September. Okay. That's next month. Okay. How are you going to hit it? What is your goal? By when do you want to achieve your goal? And how are you going to achieve that goal? If you want to grow a team of 50, that means by, by, by September, 
that means you yourself have to be recruiting, right? So I'm going to recruit. And then you yourself have to teach your team to recruit because you can't do it by yourself. You shouldn't do it by yourself. You should teach your team to be recruiting. So you broke it down there. I'm gonna recruit myself and I'm gonna teach my team to recruit. Okay, how are you going? Now we're breaking it down even more. I want to teach my team to recruit by, I'm gonna bring in some guest speakers. That's one. I'm going to um, watch some trainings on, 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 on YouTube about recruiting myself so that I can turn around and teach my team. That, wrote that down. My next goal is going to be I'm going to mentor closely two to three of my up and coming leaders that I can see have a future in this business. And I'm going to mentor them specifically one on one if they want to be mentored on recruiting. You already got three bullet points on how to how you you're you're going to make this happen by September 30th or whenever. Having a goal is great, but without a plan, you're sitting in neutral and you're wishing and you're hoping and you're passive. Get that plan together. Break it down. Sit down at a table, at a desk, quiet time. We're in a brand new incentive season. It's the time to do this now. You sit down without any distractions. You put your goal in front of you. My goal is to promote to director by May. Okay. So by May, how? How am I going to promote to director? I'm going to recruit. I'm going to talk about PRV to my team. You got to break it down and then you put dates. Okay, this date I'm gonna go live and talk to my team about recruiting. I'm gonna talk to my group about this. I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And you see what I mean? You have to break them down into little chunks. You eat an elephant bite by bite, bite, which nobody wants to eat an elephant. I don't know why it exists, okay? Okay. It's important to have specific goals. So when, you, when I seen somebody said, hold on, I caught my eye. Let me go back. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Become a stronger leader. Having specific goals is very, very important. Vague goals are not enough. Becoming a stronger leader, how, Alice? What, what's going to make you a stronger leader? Do you need to do more recognition? Do you need to do more training? Do you need to lead more by example? We'll just pick, let's just say, you could put it below in the comments and I'll jump in when I see it. How do you wanna be a better leader? What do you think you need to do to be a better leader? And I'm just gonna use this as an example. If you say, I need to um, be more consistent on my team page. Okay, that's your, that's your, your, your goal. Break it down. How are you gonna be more consistent? I'm going to post every Monday morning, I'm gonna do Monday motivation. Every Tuesday, I'm gonna do Tip Tuesday. Every um, Wednesday, I'm gonna do Wisdom Wednesday or Wax Change Wednesday or What Are You Warming Wednesday. Do you see what I mean? The vague goals are gonna get you overwhelmed and it's gonna discourage you and it's gonna get you, it's gonna feel like your 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 wheels are turning in the mud and you're not getting anywhere. Specific goals, not vague goals. And then it has to be personal. Lastly, your goal has to drive you. It has to wake you up in the morning so you're not just laying in bed sleeping in. If your goals and your dream, if your dream doesn't add fuel to your goal that leads you into jumping into your plan, then it's not strong enough. You have to have that why be strong enough. And let me give you an example. My why is so embedded in me, that's the word I was looking for earlier, is so embedded in me. Nobody can tell me anything different. And here's my why. When I first joined Sensi, my why was I wanted to get a discount. I didn't want to pay full price for Sensi. That was my why and it was enough. It's not enough anymore. Once I started getting the paychecks that I was getting, 
I no longer, and I talked to my husband earlier, I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm going to say something and it's no, <laughs> no offense to you. It's just me as a person. I no longer wanted to depend on another person for my financial stability. I didn't want to ask my husband for money anymore to go shop. How much do you need? I felt like I was asking my dad, no disrespect to my husband, but I, I felt like I had to ask for money. And then when I would get home, it would be, oh, how much did you spend? Where's my change? And I'm just like, oh, I don't like to live like this because I'm an independent person. I have been since I was 14 years old. I never had to depend on anybody for finances. I did my own thing. I had my first job at Taco Bell, hence the reason why I would choose Taco Bell for every single birthday gift over and over and over and over again. <laughs> um, I, like seriously, like a birthday gift for me would be a Taco Bell gift card, gift card because that's how much I love Taco Bell. I didn't want to depend on anybody else, including my mom, including my husband. I didn't want to financially burden anybody else and I wanted the freedom that I, I've always experienced as a child. Since I was 14, I started working on my own. I never had been without a job until I got married. I got married and then I became a housewife. So that meant there's no income for me. Um, watch out, you're gonna run into these people. <laughs> um, I, I never was without a job until I got married and became a housewife. And then I had no income that I was, that I didn't have to answer for, if that made sense. Once I started getting those checks, and I, then I didn't have to ask for money anymore. I didn't have to explain everything I was spending anymore. I didn't have to give change back anymore. I was like, there's my freedom. That's what I've been missing. And if you follow me on Instagram, I talk about some of the reasons why Sensi keeps me here. Because it reminded me of the freedom that I had before I had kids and became a housewife and didn't work for a while. It reminded me, there you are, Ree. I got lost and there's nothing wrong with being a housewife. I love being a housewife, but you're more than a mom. You're more than a wife. You have your own individual identity and your identity is limitless. You're not just a mom. You're not just this. You're not just that. You're, you have, your identity is limitless. And that's something that Sensi gave me back. And I didn't even realize that I had lost myself. But being independent is such a big part of me that it made me happy again. It wasn't because the money I could buy whatever I want. I could do whatever I want. My kids, da 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 da. Because I never bought for myself. I was never selfish. I'm never a selfish person, but it just reminded me hey, Re, remember you're an independent woman and you love it and you love being uh, able to, 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 to bless others and you're a giver. I couldn't give to other people because I had to answer to everything and that's not what I was used to and there's nothing wrong with it, but now it's different. Your why has to be enough to drive you into your dreams, into your goals. Now what? You dreamt like your seven-year-old self again. You set a goal. You put a plan together. Now you're gonna start acting in it, right? Exactly, Don. This is my full-time job. And I love it. I love that I don't have to go and work outside of the house and I can still contribute. I'm able to financially contribute to, to our household. The utilities, my car, my insurance, everything. And it feels good. Now what? Now you think everything's gonna be easy, right? Because you've got your dream, you got your goal, you got your plan, and now you're like, okay, great, everything's gonna be great. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not going to be easy. 
this is where your why fuels you and this is where your why uh, really really is going to have you dig deep your vision board this week <coughs> your dreams your why has to keep you going but I want you to be flexible and I'm going to close with this the goal doesn't have to change, but sometimes your plan will. And you have to be flexible. What do I mean by that? Sometimes plan A is not going to work. Sometimes you're going to have to say, you know what? I still want to have this as my full-time job and I want to retire and I want to be home with my kids. But this original plan, the way I planned to do it is not working. So now I got to sit down and I got to restructure my plan. Over and over and over again, you guys, we are going to restructure our plan. We change our plan, not the goal. You're not going to say, this is too hard. Now, I guess I'm just not going to go for it anymore. I guess I'll go for less. No, why? Why do you have to go for less? Why do you have to settle for less? You do not. You do not change your goal. You change the method. You change the plan. You change the roadmap. You don't change the destination or the location. You want to retire. You want to move to Tennessee. You want to be a singer. You want to be, <coughs> you want an incentive trip. You want to be on in Los Cabos. You want whatever it is. You're going to see that the plan is probably going to change a little bit. I'm going to have eight parties every month. I'm going to recruit two people. I'm going to every single month. I'm going to do that. Okay. What happens after month one, when you did not get eight people that you wanted to recruit, you got two people. I'm going to get 2,500 PR, uh, 2,500 PRV the first month of August. What if you don't hit that? Always aim for the stars. You'll land on the moon, right? Or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot high. Yes. Big big goals big dream we only go big that's what we do but what happens when you fall short you just say forget it now it's not going to work no you say let me sit down and readjust this plan i'm going to sit down and i'm going to have my positive pants on and i'm going to say you know what i fell short a little bit but i'm going to add that to next month i'm going to work okay how am i going to if i fell short five hundred dollars i only hit two thousand which is still great um i only hit two thousand this month next month my goal was 2,500, but now that I fell short 500, I'm gonna push my goal to next month to 3,000, okay? 3,000 PRV. I only recruited one person I wanted to, so next month I'm going to, to go for three. Do you see how you can adjust your plan to still achieve your destination? You don't have to give up. I want you guys to dream. I don't know you all personally, and I hope I didn't offend anybody, and I hope I'm going to go back and read all the comments, but you guys, I want to, to get all of this out before we get to, like, we literally just got to the softball field right now. My girl's going to start playing in an hour, but I wanted to get this all out to you guys. I'm going to go back. I'll respond to your stuff, I promise, but I want you guys to take this night. It's 743 over there roughly, right? I want you guys to go to bed and I want you guys to open up your mind. How do you not give up when you fail? This is where I struggle. Okay, Tasha, I'm glad. I'm, thank you for your transparency. I'll answer that. This is what I do. I keep going because if you give up, you're going to be in the same spot as you were last time. Why do you want to keep starting over? You don't have to keep starting over. Every time you fall, you fall forward. If you quit, you fall backwards. If you are falling forward, guess what? You pick yourself up and you look back and you're like, oh, I'm a little bit forward. You learn from the fail. Failure is not a bad thing. Failure leads to success. Do you know how many successful people are failures? Myself included. Do you know how many things I tried that didn't work? Imagine if I would have gave up. Imagine if I would have said recruiting is too hard, I can't do this. My team is ignoring me. They're not working. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Nobody's responding. Nobody's interacting. I'm a failure. I'm a bad leader. Imagine what I would have missed out in my life. Think about that, Tasha. You're going to feel 
the, the sting of failure, that's part of it. Use that to fuel you. If you, let me say this. If there's ever a time where you stop failing, that means you stop trying. You're going to freaking fail. And that's okay. You have to, you have to take the sting out of failure. You have to say, oh, I laugh at myself sometimes, to be honest. I did a fundraiser a couple months ago that completely flopped, not one sale, not da 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 and I put my all into it. I thought, I thought it was going to be the best fundraiser ever. I pumped it up. I hyped it up. I, all this stuff, not one sale. And I laughed <laughs> when I closed it. Was I disappointed? Yes. Did I get the results that I wanted? No. Was it a learning experience? Yes. Perspective on how you look at failure will change your life. Not just in Sensi, but in general. Anytime you fail, you fail forward, which means you're learning, which means that you're taking it, taking notes, and you're going to continue. You're gonna put that in your pocket. You're gonna put that in your 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 drawer of learning of learned lessons. You cannot be afraid to fail. You're, you'll be paralyzed. Oh, I don't want to try that because what if it doesn't work? Then you will never achieve greatness because greatness is on the other side of failure what was I saying before that oh and you guys could keep going I promise I'm just I don't I don't want to keep you guys too long because over here it's five over there <laughs> it's almost eight I want you guys <coughs> sorry to put my asthma is really bad here the the grass is crazy everything's bad I want you guys to sit down. First tonight, I want you to sleep on what you've heard tonight. I don't know if you took notes. If you did, great. If you didn't, that's okay too. Um, I want you guys to sleep on what you listen to tonight. I want you to sleep on your seven-year-old self. I want you to sleep on dreaming of things that you want in your life. I want you guys to sleep on it. Maybe even dream about things, right? And then tomorrow morning, I want you to wake up with a fresh mind unless you're, you're encouraged to, do, I mean, unless you're moved to do it tonight. I want you to, to write down your goals. I want you to write them out. Put them on your, put a, a part of it on your fridge. Put a part of it on your bathroom mirror. Put it in your office. If you don't have an office, put it on your laptop. Put it on your iPad. Take a picture of it. Put it on your screensaver as your phone. I mean, uh, as your screensaver on your phone. I find it hard when you always have negative family that always told you you were blind. You are blind. You can't do this. I feel like I'm more independent than my family gave me credit for. Jamie, I feel you. I feel you. It is hard when you, ha when you don't have the support from your family. But the best thing that you can do is prove them wrong. You know you're independent. You may have needed them growing up because every child did, every teenager did. And sometimes as adults, we needed help from our parents as well. That is not your truth, Jamie. And you don't adopt that and you don't take it and you don't wear it because that's not your truth. Your truth that you just said, you know, you feel like you are more independent than your family gave you credit. That's your truth. You are more independent than your family gave you credit and you wear that and now you prove them You don't let it stunt you. You don't let it hinder you because then they're just gonna say yeah, see we're right With all due respect. I say that to them to, to what they said not to them as people but to what they said with all due respect Speak like life over yourself because nobody else is gonna speak life over you only you know what you're capable of. You know your thoughts. You know what you could do. You know what you should have done. You know what you could have done. You know you know what you wish you would have done. Speaking on dreams and vision and goals is a touchy subject because of our past and because of life's experiences and what we've gone through in our lives. I have a family member that was told he was nothing. I have a family member that told he would never amount to anything. And he was the most brilliant soul that I've ever met. Be the person that you want your child to have. Be the person you wish you had when you were growing up. Be that voice in your head that you wish you had growing up. And I'm so sorry that the, that the 
they tell you you can't do it but don't don't accept that that's not your truth that's their opinion and their opinions don't pay your bills their opinions are like I won't say it they're like a-holes and everybody has one <laughs> It makes me sad to hear that. It makes me sad. But guess what? You're here and you're pushing through and I believe in you and I know Kelly believes in you and I know your sponsor believes in you. And we have an you guys have a beautiful community here and I'm so blessed to be to have been asked to come and speak here. And I want you guys to own your truth and your truth is what you say about yourself what nobody else says about you and what God says about you nothing anybody else says matters nothing they can think you're ugly who cares they can think you're not good enough who cares they could think you're gonna fail who cares none of it matters and when you accept that and you clothe yourself in that, the world becomes a lot different. And you start walking with your shoulders back. I don't know when this happened in my life. I don't know when this happened in my life, but there was a day when I got up and my shoulders were back. And this is what I teach my girls, and I'm glad she's not in here right now, but there's, for my daughter, there's, she's very well known in the softball world. She's, she's number four in the nation. She's a top pitcher in the nation. And she's hated on by people she don't even know. And we dealt with something yesterday. And she goes, Mom, I don't want to cry. <sighs> My husband's a well-known coach either. He's not well-liked because he's a winner. And when you're a winner, people hate on you. She said, Mom, I wish I wasn't so well-known so people could get to know me for who I am instead of just prejudging me. Who was a mom? I wanted to grab that little girl by her neck that was talking about my daughter. <laughs> Come here, you little brat. You know, like, well, it was a choice word. That wasn't brat. Anyways, um, I said, babe, you do not dull your shine for anybody to feel better about themselves. You keep shining, girlfriend, and the right people are going to gravitate towards you, and God's going to bring the right people. Don't dull your shine. Let that seven-year-old you shine as you're setting your goals tonight or tomorrow. I, I really, really, really want you guys to do this, and I hope you do. I want you guys, and I hope this is okay with Kelly, I want you guys to write down your goals, whatever it may be, your personal goals, your family goals, your business goals. Write it down. This is different from your vision board because I want you to stick this elsewhere. Your vision board is going to go wherever wherever you put it, right? Yes, Michelle. <laughs> she was ranked number four in the nation for overall, and then she's the top pitcher in the nation. I'm so blessed. God is good. He's given me a talented family. Oh, they did today, Kelly. That's awesome. Perfect. Okay, I want you guys to, to take a picture of it. I want you guys to tag me because I want to see them. I want to feel part of your journey. And then I want you to put them around your, your, your on your mirror. Write, write a word on your mirror in lipstick or on from lip liner or on a post-it. Post it, put it on your mirror. Put one on your fridge. Put one in your laundry room. I want you to put some goals around your house. And I want you to dream again. And I want you to envision yourself again. When you're walking around the house, you're going to see that. When you get ready in the morning, seven-year-old self is going to remember. And they're going to say, oh, I remember. I want to go on that trip. I'm going to go on that trip. Seven-year-old self, when you're doing your laundry, okay, after I fold my laundry, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go on that trip. When you get into the fridge, I'm in the fridge more than anything. <laughs> I'll probably see. That's going to be my biggest goal on the fridge. That's going to be my biggest goal. I'm going to slap on the fridge because I'm always there. I want to earn a top earner for the incentive. It's done. It's going to happen. Slap that on there. 
I want to see it. Show me and tag me. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I'm at Reez1980, R-E-E-Z-1980. Take a picture of where you slap those things and tag me. I want to see. I'm blessed to be here tonight. Kelly, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm blessed. I feel it's my privilege to be here with you guys and speak life over you. And I pray that you and you held on to it and you continue to hold on, on to it for the rest of your journey. I love you guys. I know I don't know you um, personally, but I feel like we bonded today. Yeah. All right. My code word is Tupac and I'm done for the night. Have a great night, guys. Love you.